Hey friends, Henry from Adventure Air here. And so today we are going to talk about, we got some questions from you viewers, uh, the most common questions that were asked. And by the way, if you ever have any questions, please uh, write them in there and ask. I'm happy to answer uh, anything that I know. And I'm the first to admit that I don't know everything about these things, but I'll tell you what I do know, okay? So question one is, uh, what is pilot-induced oscillation and how can I avoid it? Okay, pilot-induced oscillation is just how it sounds. It's pilot induced. It's something that the pilot starts. It generally comes from over controlling. So if you're flying along with a stick and all of a sudden you push the stick forward and then the nose dives down and you, then you jerk it back to make that correction, then you jerk it forward again, jerk it back, that's going to start an oscillation going. Okay? So don't over control. Light grip on the stick. Remember just literally you should be able to fly with two fingers. If you start an oscillation like that, let the stick go and you, that oscillation should slow down or stop. But it is pilot Pilot-induced oscillation, it's usually something that you are doing as a pilot. It's generally not something that the aircraft's going to do. You may get it started doing, but it's generally something that you do, okay? Pilot-induced oscillation. So don't over-control the gyro. Little tiny movements forward and back, little tiny movements left and right, okay? All right, what's the difference between a gyroplane, a gyrocopter, and an autogyro? Um, nothing, they're all the same. <laughs> a gyroplane is the official FAA term. Gyroplane is what the FAA calls these things. Gyrocopter um, is a trademarked name that's owned by someone. Uh, it's like saying Kleenex or Cessna. You know, it is not what these aircraft are. Gyrocopter is a certain brand. A lot of towers will say gyrocopter, that's not correct correct, but I don't correct them. Um, gyroplane is the correct FAA term. And autogyro is what these things are. They're in auto rotation. Autogyro happens to be a brand. Uh, that's the German brand is autogyro. Uh, so autogyro, gyrocopter, and gyroplane are all the same. The correct FAA term is gyroplane. All right. How is the gyroplane different from a helicopter? Okay. Couple things. Uh, on the rotor up here, the rotor on a gyroplane is not powered. We do have a pre-rotor system on a lot of these that will start the spinning up, but once it spins up, we let that system go, a bendix drops out, and the gyro, the uh, blade just spins in the wind. It's not being powered by anything except for the wind blowing through that. It's called auto, -rota auto rotation, okay? Helicopters have a transmission that turns the blade, okay? It's a lot of extra parts up there. Blades on some helicopters also articulate like this. This blade does not. It's a simple simple fixed pitch rotor on a spindle. It just spins in the wind. And that's the difference between a helicopter and an autogyro. Gyroplanes can fly slow. You can even go to zero airspeed. If you go to zero airspeed in the gyroplane, you are gonna start descending because wind needs to keep blowing through the blades to keep them spinning in auto rotation. If you just stopped in midair and had no, you know, nothing else, the blades would slow down, but you can't really do that. When you slow down and stop in midair in a gyro, you'll start descending. Wind's gonna continue to blow and spin the blade, okay? That's another difference between a gyro and a helicopter. We cannot do a flat hover. We cannot just stop in space in there. Anytime we stop, we're gonna descend, okay? All right. What is auto rotation? Okay, auto rotation is wind blowing from the bottom of the blade through the top of the blade, automatically spinning the blade. That's what I just kind of spoke about. So auto rotation is what helicopters do when they get in trouble, okay? Uh, a helicopter has to get in auto rotation. Because the blade in the helicopter is being, uh, with a transmission being turned, it's pushing air down to lift the helicopter off the ground. When a helicopter goes into auto rotation, it reverses the flow of wind from being pushed down to going through the blades to spin them, just like we always do in the gyroplane. We are always in auto rotation. The moment we lift off the ground in a gyroplane, we're in auto rotation. The nice part about that is if we're 50 feet off the ground and the helicopter is 50 feet off the ground, we both lose our engine. We're already in auto rotation. We're gonna float back down and land. A helicopter has to get into auto rotation. I'm not sure they'll do it from 50 feet. How safe is the gyroplane? Well, at, from what I just explained, I think they're incredibly safe. I personally feel these are some of the safest aircraft flying. A whole bunch of things can go wrong. You can lose your engine, all that. It has no effect on the blade system here. You like a leaf off a tree, you're just gonna float it down and you land in a little spot, an area the size of a tennis court, if, if you get practice on that, with no power, okay? So I personally think there's some of the, the safest aircraft that are flying out there. It all boils down to training. You 
really need to get good training and practice flying these things, but once you've uh, got the skills mastered, it's one of the safest things that you can do. Are gyros expensive to operate? I don't think so. <laughs> They're some of the least expensive things that you can operate in aviation. They burn regular car gasoline, uh, the Rotex engines do. Fuel burn is about four to five gallons an hour, so you're not burning 100 low lead, which is more expensive. Also, every 100 hours of flight on these models, we do want oil and filter change to full inspection, but that's, that's kind of minimal stuff. There's not a lot of things that go wrong because fewer moving parts, less things to go wrong, less things that you have to replace. Uh, maybe we do brake pads every four or 500 hours. Not that much though. Pretty inexpensive to operate. Okay, do gyros need an airstrip or runway for operation? Um, well, you have to take off from somewhere. If uh, you're at an airport, uh, you can always use the airports. Uh, some of them are regular certified aircraft. You can use pretty much any airport. If you have private property and your city allows it, the city uh, allows you to do this, you can take off and land from your own property. Um, you will have to build some kind of a strip. I would recommend that you don't have a lot of rocks and things like that. But uh, the distance wise, I know a guy in Florida that has his own strip, a grass strip, it's like 600 feet. He flies in and out of there all the time. Longer the better, of course. Uh, the landing distances are pretty short. Uh, the takeoff is the thing you have to be concerned with. And again, it depends on what engine size you have. If you have one of the bigger Rotex engines like the 915, you can get off the ground a lot quicker. But you don't have to land in an airport all the time. You can land on private property with permission as long as your city ordinance does not prohibit it. Okay, um, next question we have is um, how high and fast can they fly? Um, the record on a stock model like this is 27,000 feet, okay? Um, that's that's pretty high. Of course, the, the uh, pilot had to use an auction system because above 15,000, you're gonna start having some auction issues. But we took a stock one up to 27,000 feet. I personally like flying low because I like to fly around and see things. Um, how fast can they fly? I think Autogyro um, has the new model that is the fastest one, and um, it is the Calidus model model with a 916 engine on it. And um, the V&E on that is 140 miles an hour. Although in Germany, they were flying it much faster than that, 150, 155 miles an hour for testing. But the V&E is 140, which I believe is the fastest gyroplane that's currently made. So 140 miles an hour, there you go. Where do I park my gyro is the question we have. Well, you can kind of park them anywhere you want. <laughs> um, I used to have a standard size tea hanger, a small hanger over at the Hawthorne Airport, um, and I put seven of them in the tea hanger. Because these things don't have wings, you can put the rotor in line with the gyro, you can kind of slot them in. And so I put seven of them in a hanger. Um, it's like playing Tetris, you just kind of fit them all in there. So that's one of the big advantages. They're only six feet wide at their widest, so you can, you can put a lot of them in a small space. Can we use an auto gyro for travel? Of course you can. Uh, about a month and a half ago, I picked one up in the Florida Keys, I flew from the Florida Keys all the way out here uh, to California. So yes, you can definitely use them for travel. Uh, they're a blast. I mean, they're not the, they're not going to go jet speed, of course. You know, you're not going to be doing three or four hundred miles an hour. But uh, they're definitely faster than a car. Straight line travel, you'll get there a lot quicker. And uh, yeah, we have guys that fly these things all around. We have people that fly them from their home to work um, or to an airport close to their work, and then they take the car in. But uh, of course, you can use them for travel. That's what the, what's the fun part about it. All right, we're back with uh, more questions from our viewers here. So uh, let's see. How much training do I need? Okay, well, that all depends on your experience level. Um, for someone with zero experience of flying, um, these fall under light sport category, which the minimum is 20 hours of flying time, 15 hours of which have to be with an instructor, five hours have to be solo. Okay, that's the minimum from the FAA, then you're eligible to take the test. Okay, most people don't do it in 20 hours, they take a little bit longer than that. Uh, but are you a fast learner? Those are questions. My fastest guy did it in about 25 hours, and then I've got one guy that's at 80 hours right now. So it all depends on you and how fast you learn, but um, there's how much training you need. If you are a, a, a fixed wing pilot, 
These are an add-on rating to your fixed wing license, okay? There's no hourly requirement, you just have to be proficient. Now, how long does it take you to get proficient? I'm gonna say between five and 15 hours is the average uh, for people. Um, most people take 10 or more, a couple of people will do it in five, depending on their experience level. I had a guy that was a 30,000 hour helicopter pilot who was a military test pilot. He did it in about five hours, but that's an exception, it's not the rule. Generally, you'll need a little more training than that. Do any gyro rotors turn opposite directions? Okay, most of the rotors I know, I'll go counterclockwise, okay? I don't think so. I don't know the answer to that, but I think all of the gyros that I can think of turn counterclockwise. I don't think, can't think of any that turn clockwise. If I'm wrong, please uh, text me and let me know. Um, but I think they all go counterclockwise. Um, okay, if I get a single engine private pilot, does the add-on give me private pilot for gyroplane? Maybe is the answer to that, okay? Um, if you are a private pilot, uh, single engine land, and uh, you want the gyro rating, what we do mostly is the sport pilot add-on. The sport pilot add-on, again, is no hourly requirement. You just have to be proficient, and it can be done by two instructors. Me, as, well, as one instructor, can sign you off. I have a second instructor that works for me that can give you the proficiency check to make sure you're proficient uh, at the, flying the gyro. We do an endorsement in your logbook, and you're all done. If you're a private pilot and you want private pilot gyroplane, you have to get a check ride from a DPE, a designated pilot examiner. Also, the requirements for the for the gyro private pilot, you have to do some night flying. I think you have to do a long cross country. You have to do so many hours in the gyroplane. So it's much easier to get a sport pilot add-on. You can get a private pilot. It's just going to take more requirements for you to do that. All right, this question. Can we use helicopter procedures at an airport? It depends. We are, we are classified classified as a rotorcraft. What I did here at Chino is when I first got here, I talked to the tower. I said, hey tower, we're a rotorcraft. Would you like us to fly the helicopter patterns, which sometimes can be lower, or would you like us to fly the fixed wing pattern? And he, the tower said, well, we'd like you guys to fly the fixed wing pattern. So that answer is maybe. I would definitely check with the airport to find out what they would prefer you to do, um, if to fly the helicopter patterns or to fly the airplane patterns. Okay, do I apply or adjust my trim on final approach. I don't see why. Uh, no, I'd say leave the trim as it is. As you're coming into land, you're gonna maintain a certain amount of trim. You've been flying this thing now for a while. You got the trim set the way you want it. Keep it that way to come in and land. Why is it on short final you're gonna change the trim all of a sudden? Um, I would say come in and land, and once you set down, stick forward, rotor brake on brake, bump it up, slowly exit the runway, no jerking off the runway. That's one of the number one causes of accidents, okay? So I would not personally adjust the trim on landing. Last question, why don't you demonstrate the impossible turn in landing on a runway? Okay, I will. <laughs> Basically here at the Chino Airport, it's a very busy airport, and so we have to coordinate with the tower whenever we're gonna take off from one runway, flip a 180, come back in and land on the opposite, on the same runway going the opposite direction. Um, if there's a lot of wind too, I don't wanna do that because that would be a downwind landing. So I'll pick a morning here sometime, uh, keep checking with us in the future, and um, I'll pick a nice no wind day, I'll make arrangements with the tower, and I will show you that taking off from the runway, loss of power, Power, 180 spin back landing on the runway. I'll do that for you guys, no problem. And now, my last question is, what happens if a tire flies off your gyro? Uh, well, then you need to get the tire retrieval system, and I'm gonna demonstrate it right now. Here's a tire, and it flies off your gyro, like that. <laughs> Put it down. There you go. That's the tire retrieval process. So if you need one of these to get your tire back, give me a call and I can help you out. From that, okay, that's Henry from Adventure Air. Uh, let's come out here and visit me and uh, make sure you like and subscribe to our channel. But uh, come out here and fly with me. Let's have some fun in Chino. See ya.